Right, I'm right. What's up? It's Prospector Phil here. And today we're going to take these sterling silver knife handles, cut them apart and weigh them up, and find out how much silver is actually in them. So first of all, I've got a couple different sizes here so we can kind of see the difference between big ones and small ones. And your mileage may vary. It will vary because some of them put a lot thicker handle on there than others. So some are going to be thin, some are going to be thick, yada yada. So real quick here, um, you're going to find these handles on flatware pieces. And they aren't necessarily on knives. There's a serving fork. And here's a large spoon. So I'm going to show you first of all what to look for, what to watch out for, and then we'll get to ripping them apart. On this type of flatware, let's pick the bigger one. There's really one thing you want to watch for, and that's the word sterling. Now they're almost always going to be marked on one of the sides, along here, along there, or they're going to be marked right along the top edge here. And keep in mind, the only part that's sterling is the handle. And this here, we can see that says International Stainless. So at least they marked the blade to tell us, well, the blade's not sterling. There are exceptions, and here's our exception, and you will find stuff like this once in a while. And it says sterling, what is that? Let me see. I can't quite read that top mark without a loop. Looks like a hallmark, but then underneath it says 925 over 1000 which is something to watch for, but you really want to watch for that sterling mark. They put this one on the blade. This is one piece. This is solid silver. So while that's really super cool, that's not what we're doing in this video. I just wanted to show you real quick. So let's take these, I think right there, and I'll show you the markings. There we go. Sterling handle. You can barely read that one. Maybe you can read this one better. And notice it's it's really nice to watch out for the same patterns. Because if you find one, you can oftentimes find more than one. There we go. Sterling handle. That's what you want to look for right there. When they mark them along the edge up here, a lot of times it'll just say sterling. But that's what we want to look for. This one I'll show you real quick. Check both sides. Oh, there it is right there. Boy, that's a big marking. I don't know how someone missed that, but they did sterling handle. And the blade. Oh, it has marked stainless steel. That's a nice blade. I might have to use that for something else. Now, this is the first one that I've seen like this where the mark is right in the middle. Again, I've got to flip it. Sterling handle right in the middle there. Usually they're on the edges. But another thing you can tell is when it says sterling handle, that's almost a guarantee that the rest of it is not sterling. They're saying that, well, just this handle is sterling. So even though that doesn't look like it, that handle is silver. And now we've gone over what to look for, let's look at what to look out for. This one here, no marks on the sides, no marks up around the top edge. Look how weird that is. So what I look for on stuff like this is first of all no marks, and then if you can tell, the high points here, you can actually see where it's dug in through the plating, especially like right there. And up along here. Where you can see 
whatever silver plating was on there has worn off. So I would all but guarantee that this one has no silver value whatsoever. It's just silver plated. I look up here. That's usually not going to be silver. The handle should be, but it's got a bunch of high points that are worn, and I can see right through the plating into the base metal underneath. So that's what to look out for. If it's not marked at all, chances are it's not silver. Now there's several ways that we can rip these apart. Uh, the easiest way is either a pair of snips, a pair of pliers. Um, pliers are actually pretty difficult on this sort of thing. Snips aren't much easier because you've got to basically get it in there or snip part of it and then peel it. And some of these can be pretty thick and that ends up giving you all sorts of long stringy shards that are super sharp. And if you see my fingers before, it's not a good idea. So I'm going to bypass the snips. Another way to do it is just your flex tool with a cutoff disc. Yeah, that'll work really good. So this is going to lose just a tiny bit of silver when I do it. But all I'm going to do is just cut along the edge and probably the back edge here and just cut a line all the way down and then just a little bit over this hump here and then I can pop it apart. Now inside there's either going to be uh, like a concrete or a cement which is kind of like a plaster of Paris or it's going to be this really tacky, it's almost like a resin stuff that kind of melts and gets really weird when it gets hot. But this is the best way i found to do it. And the amount of silver that you lose is not very much. So I like to do it just because when you find one knife, you usually find more than one. And it's just a real time saver. And then when you go to scrap it, it's just so much easier to have this whole shell rather than big, long, stringy pieces that are going to cut the crap out of you. So that's what I'll do is I'll go along these back edges here and cut a line in them. And then we'll pop them apart and weigh them up and see what we got. All right. So once you got the initial cut in there with the flex tool, then you can, or with your Dremel, whatever, then you can just stick your cutting disc in right there and run it straight down and luckily this one has the plaster cement in it so it's not going to make quite as much of a mess as some of the others do so that'll be nice anyway i'll run that line down and then we'll pop it open and see one down three more to go awesome oh yeah Got lines down, every single one of them. And I could tell right away, as soon as I cut this last one, that's a lot thinner than the others that cut a lot easier. So once you start doing enough of these, you'll be able to tell, you know, what's thicker and what's thinner just by looking at them, or at least have a good educated guess. I'm not sure what's inside this last one. It kind of smelled like it could be resin, I don't know. This one's definitely the nasty resin stuff. And you want to cut those in a ventilated area because they'll start to do this little melty thing. And it stinks. But no worries. So now all we got to do is pop them open, get rid of the crap on the inside, and then weigh them up and see. Oh, and just to keep things straight, let's number them real quick. We got small to large and then then this different one here. So we'll go one, two, three, and four. And that way when I get the handles off, we can keep track of what's what. Let's start with number one. I found the easiest way to do this is just take another knife and stick it right in there and pop it open. And with a little bit of work, it'll come apart. You definitely want to do this over something because it's going to make a mess. Kind of like.
like that. Now the reason I go all the way down is because you usually get a little bit in the end here. And that just makes it a little bit easier to get that last part out. Kind of like that. So here's this plaster cement crap. It's probably just like a plaster of Paris. But you can see that's actually a fairly thick handle there. Got everything out from the inside, but that's a good handle. That'll weigh up. So one down, three to go. Now I can use the blade from the first one and do the same thing on the second one. Just get it in there and pry a little bit and work it along. And that whole thing will pop up and then we can dump the contents. Kind of like that. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good chunk right there. That's nice. Number three here. Oh wow. That's peeling up a lot easier than the first two. And you can see in there, that's that resin crap that I was talking about. That really stinks when you get it hot. And it's also, it's kind of tacky and sticky. It's not really sticky to the touch. But if you get it warm or you get it wet, it'll start to get tacky and it makes a mess. But that's interesting. That one peels up super easy. So I'm going to guess that number two here, where it's a lot thicker, even though it's smaller, I would bet you that this one is going to weigh at least as much, if not more, than number three. So we'll see. But anyway, um, let me pull this apart. I'm going to show you the inside of these real quick because that, that plaster and then this, those are the two type of fillings that you're commonly going to run into on any sort of weighted sterling and especially the handles. So keep going. One other quick note, this resin doesn't always come out quite as easy as the, the concrete stuff. Sometimes they do. I actually, I gave that a little uh, coaxing with a hammer, but you can see I've still got some down at the end. I get most of it, so you can either take a little hammer and just pound on it a little bit. That'll knock it out, or you can take something that'll get down in there and pry it out. This stuff's a lot more messy than the, the plaster, concrete, cement stuff. And every time I touch it, I feel like I need to wash my hands. But So there's the other type of filler you're going to run into. And we got one more after this. Let me knock that out and get on to the next one. Oh yeah. Freaking sweet. We got number one, number two, number three, and number four. <laughs> number two. <laughs> so, again, the reason I like this method of ripping them apart is it's nice and easy. I'm not bleeding anywhere. And when it comes time to scrap them, I can take a hammer and smash them all flat. Good to go. Let's weigh them up. We'll start with one and work our way up. Number one. 11.89 grams. Wow, for that small, that's actually a lot. I've seen ones this size that are only 5 grams. That's good. So this one, number two. Now keep in mind, these were the same pattern. And they both felt thicker. Both before and after I cut them, and while I was cutting, it seemed thicker. 16.6563 grams. So, those are pretty good. That's, that's about what you can expect. It's usually 10 to 15 grams or so for a decent handle. Number one, number two. Now, number three. Oh, I picked this up. It feels light. 12.25 so I was right number two even though it's smaller it does weigh more than number three 12.25 versus 16.6 grams so that is one thing to keep in mind is not all handles are made alike but 
like I said, they're usually five to, or 10 to 15 grams. Every once in a while you run into a janker, something that is just thin and skinny. And this one is still going to be almost eight and a half grams. Exactly 8.49, 8.5 grams. So even though this one had that big giant spoon on it, that's really not that much silver. It does add up. So once again, run through them real quick. Number one, 11.89. Number two, that was our heaviest one there. 16.63 grams. Number three, 12.25-ish grams. And then number four, eight, eight and a half grams, roughly. So there you go. That'll give you an idea of how much these weigh. Um, I, on average, like I said, figure they're 10 to 15 grams. Uh, if it's if I'm not sure, I discount it because you never know when you're going to run into something like this, which you can you can hear how thin that is. But it still adds up. It still adds up. Sterling silver, it's money in the bank if you ask me. Just over 49 grams for the four of them. So even if you figure an average of 10 grams each, uh, usually you'll do okay. Anyway, there we go. That's my video. Really appreciate you guys watching. And thumbs up and like, subscribe. Uh, share it if you can because that helps me too. And I appreciate all your support. And we're going to make more videos, so stay tuned.